yarns are not always the same. In the previous video we've talked about the direct system, so today in this video we're going to talk about the indirect system and why it exists, so stay tuned, I think you'll enjoy what I got for you. Hey guys, I'm Alberto and I'm a textile technician that lives and works in Italy. Today we're going to talk about indirect system and why it exists. As for the direct system, also here in the indirect system we need two things, the width and the length, but something changes. In the indirect system there are a number of different sizes. We have for example the English number, also known as the cotton number, the metric number, the linen number, the wool number and so on and so on. So there are a number of different sizes, So, but the most common used are the English number and the metric number. The metric number is the most recognizable because normally the number of the plies becomes first. So in this case you will not have 220 slash 2 but you will have something like 2 slash 60. That means that 2 is the number of the plies and 60 is the yarn count of the single ply. To obtain the English number is very easy. You take the length, you divide it for the weight and you multiply for 0 0.59 which is the constant of the English number. The metric number is even simpler because you take the length, you divide for the weight and you multiply for 1 which is the <laughs> simple constant of the metric number. In the metric number sometimes you will find something like 2 slash 14,000 or something like that because it's basically a 14 metric number because it's the number of meters that you need to make one kilo of yarn. Remember guys this is very very important, the bigger the number the thinner the yarn is. So vice versa, the lower the number the thicker the yarn is. I know it's complicated to understand but of course it's like that because in one case you multiply but in the indirect system you divide. If you have a 60 slash 4 tidal yarn number and you obtain a 15, of course if you have 4 plies the yarn will be bigger. So let's say that for example if we take this yarn, this is for example a 1 metric number, as you can see it's very very thick and this one for example that I have over here is a 100 metric number, so it's very 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 thin. Let's now talk about the conversions. How can I switch from the uh, direct system to indirect system? It's not so difficult guys, if you take for example a 60 metric number you have to multiply the two constants of the direct and indirect system so I, had, I need to take 60 metric number and I have to put that to text. I take the two constants, the constant of the metric number is 1 so you have 1 and you multiply for 1000 which is the constant of the text and you divide for 60. If you have for example a 60 English number in this case you multiply 0 0.59, you multiply for 1000 which is the other constant and you divide for 60. It's not so complicated to make these uh, final results because there exist a lot of different websites where you can put your yarn number and then the website will tell you how many plies and uh, what the final results that you want to obtain. The results are always rounded up or down. The English number, also known as the cotton number, is very common for cotton, so it's used just for the cotton or 90% of the cases for cotton. The metric number is used for all the rest, especially knitting and for wool. Of course you can use also text and detex for the cotton, but it's not conventional used, so let's use English number for the cotton. Of course, as for the dark system, we use a simple machine called textile reel. I won't talk about them today because of course I made it in the previous video. That's it for today guys, I hope you have enjoyed the video and enjoyed the content of this video. You will find my details with my email below if you have any kind of questions I'm at disposal naturally. So as usual, stay safe, take care, I'll see you guys in the next video.